Jake Russell coming off the bench. And that has got to be a plus for uh, Nigel Lloyd. He's got, as we always talk about, the old bones in the starting five. So to have young guys that can come into the game, such as Drew Spinks and Jake Russell, to come into the game and actually make positive contribution, has got to be a big plus for Nigel. Let's take a look at the uh, starting five. It's the uh, oldest starting five uh, in the league. The youngest of them is Victor Payne, who's 26 on Monday. The rest of them are all in their 30s. Is age going to catch up with them? Except Nigel, of course, in his 40s. In his 40s is age yeah. going to catch up on them this year? In a game like this, it could. What, will, what I think will Nigel will do, if he can't control the tempo, because Brighton will be looking to fast for, I mean, fast break all the time. If he can't control the tempo, then he will look to people like Drew Spinks and Jake Russell to come into the game to try and keep up, to keep the game close. And then the old boys and the older legs can take control in the fourth quarter. Now, And the Bears will get the opening offense of the game. Duck fakes at it, hands over to White. White with a great pass inside to Davis, in and out. And there's a big ooh from the fans because they wanted to sit down. Interesting, looks like Nigel Lloyd's immediately gone to a zone, see what um, Brighton can do as far as shooting the ball from the outside. Kirk in the corner, going along the baseline, trying to get it to seam, and it goes right through the hands, out of bounds, and it is a Bears ball. Both teams coming up with turnovers, both times down the floor. Be interesting to see how they play Randy Doe. Yeah, they're going to start him at the point guard spot, but it'll be interesting to see if he goes to his usual play, which is penetrate, making contact. Well, White threw it as if uh, Duck was supposed to penetrate there. Duck never looked like he was expecting the ball and it ended up in the Lions' hands. Still nil-nil, no score in 45 seconds of play. Neither team getting close to the basket either. Duck leading uh, the Bears to Brown. Open for three. Rattles out. I think the crowd was saying, ah, oh, because they wanted yeah, to sit they, down. They started, the feet are starting to hurt now. Elaine inside. Elaine going to work. And the first foul of the game is called. Both teams struggling in the early going, trying to make a, make connection with the basket. Here's another look as Elaine went uh, around and uh, Will Johnson just chased after him more than anything else. Number one on Will Buck. Still looking for our first point of the game here. Over a minute in. Well, Milton Keynes not really the best free throw shooting team in the league. No. <laughs> and we've got one from the line. One nil the score. Duck racing it back. Oh, Duck's gone down. He slipped under his own weight. But when you have an ankle problem anyway, the last thing you need to do is hit the dick tech like that and, and that's something we were talking about earlier on as we see here randy duck driving the lane doesn't really have the confidence driving the lane hence that's why he loses his footing but we were talking about it earlier in warm-ups when he was shooting that jump shot he was favoring that leg and line ball is lobbed in still most of the bears fans on the feet one or two of them have sat down they can't wait all this time and we get the first score for the bears and the biggest roar of the night, probably, is the fans get the chance to sit down. Here's another look. It was a beautiful dish. Nice, nice spin move and nice, nice pass off. Sterling Davis with a strong finish at the backboard. Ladies and gentlemen, if you've got a match night for around this evening, make sure you turn to page seven. Page seven, which Lloyd is the guarded most. by Duck. If you have a poor print on that page, make sure you go Duck to the trying to pick his pocket. Yeah, Randy's going to try and put ball pressure on Nigel. Nigel's going to try and play mind games with Randy, so it's a really different contrasting styles between the two guards. Reggie Kirk clears some space for a little step back 19 footer. Johnson, guarded by Seaman, going strong at him to the little hook shot. Nice move from Will Johnson. And Nick Nurse really loves that play. He calls that the triangle where he dumps the ball into the post area. Two guards clear out, and it leaves Will all that room to make that jump hook. Seaman going to work. Now pulls up off the glass. Nice shot from Jason Seaman. And after taking about a minute and a half for the first goal, we started to be uh, looking more 
effective at the offensive end. Rebound Will Johnson off the miss from White, stolen away from behind by Victor Payne, and Lloyd comes up with it. Will would have been better off just picking that ball up and passing it back out to the guards. Kerr lobs it to uh, Victor Payne right through his hands. A little bit of a miscommunication there between Mick, um, Victor Payne and Kurt, Reggie Kirk. It's a couple of turnovers each in the opening uh, three minutes. And they've been pretty sloppy turnovers. Yeah, it yeah, wasn't caused by scrappy. pressure defense. Yeah. yeah, it's just, it has been a little bit sloppy here. Nice Johnson, great play. Play. <laughs> great play by Will Johnson. The strength to finish off the shot despite being fouled in the process. Once again, they're running the pick and roll play. Pick and roll means Will sets the screen and rolls towards the basket. When you roll towards the basket, Albert White finds him with a lovely bounce pass and Will takes the whole team with him and makes the basket. And converts the three-point play to give the home for Town Bears a two-point lead. Lloyd to a lane. Seaman trying to fight for position in the middle. Jason Seaman has it, hands it out to Payne. Payne stepped on the baseline, out of bounds, and it is a Bears ball. Mike Brown. Mike Brown spots up for three, a little bit short, and it comes down in the hands of Reggie Kirk. Oh, right through the hands of Victor Payne again. We're seeing some very yeah. sloppy play in the early going from both of these ball clubs, and it's more surprising, it's coming, a lot of it's coming from Milton Keynes Lions. I mean, on that one, that's one of them where Victor Payne had turned and was thinking about what he was going to do with the ball before he caught it. What? Six, three, knocks it out. A right on two, oh, Albert another White. turnover, I got it. Threw Albert. it right to me. Albert White with a nice looking three-point shot. Looked like NBA territory where he took the shot from. Well, Andre, the first thing that uh, Nigel Lloyd said is, we got five turnovers in the game, and Brighton have run it back for five points, and they can add to that here, because this is another turnover. They just can't throw the ball away. I mean, the last three offenses, they've just thrown it away. Nice to call. And White hits a three, so now of those five turnovers, they've got eight points. And I think Albert is heading for another 40 tonight because he is feeling it. Great looking stroke, nice release. Great rotation in the basketball. Will Johnson, uh, sorry, Errol Seaman has his hands up to that one. Obvious foul by Errol. Hands in the back of Jason, just pushed him out of the way when he's kept catching the basketball. But going back to Nigel Lloyd's timeout, great timeout. He's telling his team, let's all settle down and execute our offense. We haven't done anything. And once again, it's unforced turnovers. It isn't like Brighton are playing exceptionally exceptional defense. It isn't like Brighton are pressuring them all over the floor. Milton Keynes are plainly just not concentrating and throwing the ball away. Oh, as I say, on their line, this is the first time they've got to the other end of the floor now. In the last three, they've just lost it straight out of bounds. Ball comes off the back of the ring. Seaman going hard after his own rebound. Good save from the big man. Lloyd getting inside to Seaman. Seaman going strong, a little bit too much on the shot. Elaine went after the offensive board and was whistled for the foul. Andrew Elaine. <laughs> He's the one with the W, isn't he, Andrea? <laughs> yeah. I'm the one with the uh, acute accent over the <laughs> Seaman. Errol Seaman, that is. Duck with the jump shot. Nice long range, but like you say, does seem to be landing on one foot to protect his ankle. But as long as he makes the shots, that's all you can have. Yeah, that's all you care about. And uh, you got it give credit to Brighton Bears right now. They are really executing their offensive. They're moving the ball, setting screens, doing what they have to do. On the other side, Milton Keynes Lions are struggling. Well, it's the Bears 18, the Lions 8, just over midway through the first quarter. Milton Keynes have been their own worst Wild. enemy, but that one was an easy score for them. Yeah, on the down screen, Brighton Bears failed to pick up Reggie Kirk, cutting towards the basket, and he's got a wide open layup. Brown, duck, screen from uh, Seaman, duck slips but comes back up with it, duck pulls up for three, that one doesn't go, Lloyd tips it up and then grabs it at the second attempt. It looks like um, Randy's uh, talking to coach, I don't know if he wants to come out of the game to loosen up the ankle. 
Seaman. Oh, he got a lucky bounce off the uh, backboard, but couldn't convert the reverse layup. Davis to White. Nice head fake from White. White oh. goes up high and still nearly went in. Came out of his hands, but almost dropped for it. Came out of his hands. What a shame, because he was I looking know. to flush that from the outside. Elaine going to work short. White chases it down. He certainly can get up. Oh, great feet to Davis! He threw it down so hard he moved the basket. <laughs> Check this out. Level. Look at this. Watch how far Showtime. the basket moves. <laughs> Pulls it round. Nice dish by Albert White. You gotta love this guy. Great dunk, but you gotta love this guy, Albert White. He does everything. He plays defense, really solid defense. He can handle the ball in the open floor. He can make good, solid passes, and he can finish at the basket. Johnson spinning both ways, had to throw it away, ended up coming through Davis to duck. Time running out on the offense, got to get the shot off, 24 seconds about to expire, and it does. 24 second violation against the Brighton Bears, they did not get a shot off in the allotted time, and it's a turnover. Mike Brown will step out of the game, and in comes in Mark Jackson, Action Jackson. Formerly of Thames Valley Tigers, made the short trip south to Brighton over the summer. Elaine. Elaine looking to go to work. Nice move from Elaine. Good defense, though, to reply from Davis. And Randy Duck was just out of bounds when he touched the ball. So Milton Keynes will keep possession. No reset of the shot clock, though, because the ball has not hit the ring. So they've got six on it. And I don't think they realize. But it, I was about to say it doesn't matter a foul's called, but the foul has been called on Jason Seaman, an illegal screen. And uh, before handing the ball over, he just gives the referee his version of that call. And he will now go to the bench because he has picked up his second personal foul. Here. Johnson, he's got to be frustrated with, with that second foul because he knows that if one more foul, he's pretty much going to see no more time until the second half. Yeah. Offensive foul. Good call. Good call by yep. the official. And I'll tell you why it's a good call. Because... Johnson turned before he took the screen and hit him with his arm. Great call. It's an old school move yeah. that Martin Henlon uses yeah. very well. Big body the way Henlon I know. Out. <laughs> he went. Kirk throws it away as he tried to rearrange the shot. And that's the second time this evening that there's been miscommunication between Reggie Kirk and Victor Payne. And both times Reggie Kirk's had the ball trying to pass to Victor and Victor hasn't read the signals. Well, Reggie Kirk is, uh, you may well have lit read there, said, my fault on turnover number three there. Once you're that far through your shot action, you might as well shoot. White, good feed to Davis. He's hammered by Leon Knoll. Couldn't quite get the roll. What a strong man. He had Leon Knoll, just wanted to keep him on the floor. He took Leon with him and was unfortunate. Here we go. Nice dump down once again by Albert. Look. Leon was all over his back. Unfortunate to miss that shot. Keep your eye on Jake Russell. Certainly can shoot the three. Davis rims out. Yeah, he's the best three-point shooter, actually, on um, the Milton Keynes Lions team. 11th in the league. Mind you, they have had problems with uh, Nigel Lloyd and... Uh, Kirk, neither of them shooting very well from three-point land, both shooting in the 20s, low 20s at that, and these are two class shooters you wouldn't expect. Time running out on the first quarter as Reggie Kirk gets one from close in, and that will be a decent enough first quarter for the Milton Keynes lines, but Brighton really have dominated the uh, tempo throughout. They've controlled, they've executed, and they've played disciplined basketball. But you, I would expect when you look at the scoreboard that they should actually be 10 points up. They're only four. So they are end of the first then. It's the Brighton Bears 20, the Milton Keynes Lions 16. And underway in the second quarter, Nigel Lloyd will bring it over the halfway line for the Milton Keynes Lions. Elaine. Back to uh, Payne. Kirk. 
Reggie Kirk from 17 feet, and Reggie Kirk <laughs> is going to find his shooting touch a little bit here. Yeah, um, definitely a, a different Reggie Kirk than what we saw the, the first time we saw him play <laughs> against the London Towers when he couldn't find the basket. Harold Seaman threw a lob pass. I don't know if maybe they have a seven foot five inch guy in practice who catches them, but he's certainly not on the court now. And that one went up high and nobody was anywhere near. Closely by Duck, Duck trying to prevent his vision more than anything else. Shot clock running down now on the lines. Nigel's got to get it up and does for three. It's short. Rebound uh, Jackson. Randy playing really good defense on Nigel at the moment. Taking away his driving lanes and getting a hand in the face on the shot. Jackson for three. Down it for Mark Jackson. Stretches the lead back out to five. If you don't know Mark Jackson, you cannot leave him open. He will make this every time. to reply for oh. three of his own, Reggie Kirk is perfect in five attempts tonight. Did you see that he had a Brighton man all over him? He's got a hand in the face, Albert White all over him and still manages to drain the shot. White backing in, nice move off the glass, it just didn't bubble for him though. Rebound was uh, with the Lions. Albert really loves that move, backing guys down and comes back with a quick jump hook off the backboard. Lloyd, good feed to Victor Payne, who lays it in. Errol Seaman defensively got caught napping on that play. We're level at 23, two minutes into the second quarter. And BBL championship action from the Brighton Centre. And as badly as Milton Keynes are playing, they're still in the basketball game. Tie game. Well, the one thing they've done here now is uh, they've slowed, they haven't stopped, but they've slowed down the amount of turnovers, and they've also stopped the amount of points that they're getting off these turnovers, the Lions. Correct. Uh, the Bears, sorry. Errol Seaman then at the line for a couple. Misses. I think I think somebody's out to get me here tonight. We've got a seaman on either teams, an Andrew Elaine on the court, and an Andre Elaine sat next to me. The commentator's nightmare. And they're all seaman right back, slap bang on his season average, hitting 50% from the line. Mike Brown checks in for him. Seaman gets himself a breather after that free throw which has re-established the lead for the Bears. No. Right. Ooh. Wow. And I'm saying wow because uh, the referee's calling a... a, a, a there, here it is. It's a back screen being set by Victor Payne, and he called that a foul. Now, I didn't see where the infringement was on that play. No. I didn't see it in the first time, but that was a very good replay of it. And, uh, and it was a very good back screen. Yeah, that was a tough one uh, on Victor Payne, I think. No, to a lane. Milton Keynes really stagnant at the moment. Not moving, not setting screens. Ball's taking about 15 seconds to get to the other side of the court. Five seconds on the shot clock as it goes up, and they might have made three passes in 19 seconds. Duck, duck wide open for three, count it. As soon as it left his hand, it was good. Randy Duck with the triple. Great play in transition. Randy spots up, no one's guarding him, take the three-point shot. And he looked over at me and said, my ankle's hurting me. <laughs> Can't be that much. Elaine. A mismatch Lock. size, mismatch on the inside. Reggie has to take advantage of this. Doesn't, though, and Randy Duck chases down the rebound. Duck. Still Duck. Duck all the way to the glass. Rebound Davis. Davis with the stick back. Good work from Sterling Davis to follow it up. Now, Randy would have made that had that been a fit Randy Duck. He probably would have dunked that, but because he's trying to protect that ankle, he threw it up, and I think he saw some blue shirts and somebody was going to grab that rebound. Yeah, it did look like he threw it deliberately for the rebound because he never thought he was going to make it. Lloyd shot doesn't go. Good save from uh, Jackson. Almost knocked it out of bounds. White, White, the no-look 
to Davis, and Davis is fouled. Albert White is just so unselfish. He could have taken that basketball himself, but he lays it off to Sterling Davis so he could have a shot. Look at this. He can take it. Nice look away pass. Sterling Davis collects the foul, and we'll go to the free throw line after the timeout. Well, there's one Milton Keynes fan in the house. <laughs> Not the noisiest one, though, I tell you. But uh, the Bears with eight and, uh, eight without reply here, Andre. One thing in that timeout and the previous timeout in the first quarter by Milton Keynes, Nigel Lloyd seems to be doing a lot of the coaching in the timeouts, whereas in the past we've seen a lot more from Martin Ford. Yeah, um, this is probably one of these games that Nigel knows that he needs to be in control of because he, he desperately needs that win. As he says, whoever loses this game is propping up the bottom of the league, literally. Yes, yeah, certainly is tight very tight in that Southern Conference and with London Towers in something of free fall at the minute, two wins in their last 12 games, you know, that is the marquee team that everybody sets to aspire to, but if they're not winning as many games, then there's a lot of other teams out there winning and that just bunches up the Southern Conference. Yeah, I agree with everything what you're saying, but I'm just going to go back to the play here. Yeah. Nice pass on the inside from Leon Nova, wonderful head fake by Drew Spinks. Flex the foul off Albert White. And more importantly, that sticks Albert White on three fouls. Now, Nick Nurse has got Nick Nurse has got the dilemma. Does he leave him in the game? No, he doesn't. He yanks him out because he's a very important part of the Brighton Bears offense. Yeah, in defense. With 5.43 to go in the first half and a guy two fouls away from fouling out of the game, you uh, you pretty much have to yank him, I think, in that situation. Bruce Spinks, who's struggling from the line here this evening, gets a nice bobble on that one. Two is six, Spinks from the uh, free throw line. Duck lobs into Johnson. Johnson squares up to uh, Elaine before handing it over to Davis off the back of the ring. Good work from Brown to pull it away to Duck for three, that's short. And Mike Brown with another rebound. Gets it to Johnson, nice spin move from Will Johnson. Oh, what has he got to do to get one to go? Another attempt from Johnson, finally they get it to go. And Nick Nurse really loves that. That's what you call staying with it, staying with it. Mike Brown, great rebounding for the guard. Not really known for his rebounding what they get? power. Four <laughs> offensive rebounds on the one play. A lane. And if you're Milton Keynes, you've got to be concerned with that because that's loose balls. And if Brighton are coming Good up hands. with all the loose balls. Shot clock's about to run out. He's got to shoot it. Elaine doesn't see it in time. He didn't get it. Oh, will it count? I could have sworn. Did he get it off in time? Like one second on the clock, but Table's going to say yes. Yeah. No, said the referee. I must admit, my first, my first reaction was he didn't get it off in time. The ball must have left his hand before the buzzer goes. If it does, then the shot will count. And on that occasion, he didn't get it off in town, so it doesn't count. Nice work from Davis, athletically going to the glass. Good pass by Mark Jackson, but better, better flash up the lane from Sterling Davis. Bears opening up a 10-point lead once again. A lane. Out to Noel. Noel with a good head fake steps in. Shot doesn't go. Chases down his own rebound. Keys right now just don't look comfortable the way they're playing. Broken up by Duck. Just about gets the dribble back. Always rolling along the ground, but he managed to bounce it back up. Davis trying to fight for position with uh, Drew Spinks on him. Spinks pushing in the back as he fires up. Oh, nearly, nearly will Johnson uh, tip that one back in. Milton Keynes really need a score this time down. They can't afford to fall any further behind. Kirk for three on cue, just what they needed. And Reggie is sizzling from outside. He just can't miss. Reggie Kirk is two or two from downtown he's four or five inside the line so he is six for seven in total elaine had hold of will johnson as they tried to lob that pass into him and he's whistled for his second and his team's fourth in this quarter you can even see the frustration as we look here on the pass it was a nice high low play but it's a definite hold by andrew elaine on will johnson either that or it was a nice slow down from the key <laughs> Brown 
to Davis. Johnson inside to that little hook. So trusty for him, but on that occasion it doesn't go. Seaman with the boards, and Nigel Lloyd will, of course, bring it forward for the Lions. Right, and making a conscious effort to use their, their inside men on most of the plays as Nigel comes up with the M1 play. Nice play from Nigel Lloyd, seen that a few times in his career, just driving at a guy, making sure he's got enough contact for the whistle and then finishing off the play. What he does, he goes up, hangs in the air long enough so the referees can see the contact, then he lets the shot go. Well, you don't get to 40 years of age and still play without being able to play the game, do you? Always need a couple of um, old school tricks up the sleeve. Certainly do. Duck off the screen from Johnson. Duck still going. Feeds Davis. Davis attacking the basket and gets the home court roll. Good job by Randy Duck to get himself into the paint area. And once again, the awareness to find the open man. Kirk, guarded by Brown, skips it out to Elaine. Elaine with a long range effort for three. Count it. He said, let me let it go before the shot clock runs out of me this time <laughs> down. Davis gets it up to Jackson. Jackson plants his feet short. I think he might have thought about it just a little bit too long. And Davis can only bat it out of bounds. It is a Milton Keynes ball. And Milton Keynes, they've not been that, that, that great. They've not really seen totally on song in this game. They keep getting behind, but they're still only four down here. They're right in the game. And this is probably right on course for both teams, because both teams, one Brighton's averaging 77 points a game, Milton Keynes is averaging 76 points a game. And this is right... Right, right about there, yeah, I mean, Ha, um, only twice in uh, Milton Keynes' 12 games this season have both teams broken the 80-point barrier. So Milton Keynes do keep both themselves and their opponents low scoring. Shot clock running out uh, as Elaine fires up. The one thing about the Bears, though, in their last four outings, they've averaged 90 points a game, so they really have stepped it up. I think you might find a coincidence alongside the uh, arrival and fitting into the system of Albert White. Yeah. Davis offered the shot by Lane and went, all right, then I'll knock it out. And that's also another good sign, as you see here. Sterling Davis takes the wide open 17-footer, but that's also a good sign that a, that a player comes into a team and doesn't say, you guys have got to get with me. I've got to fit in with you. And he's such an exceptional talent, and obviously a mature player, as Jay Russell strokes it from the three-point yeah, line. I did say keep an eye <laughs> on this kid, because he's so, if there's nothing else he can do on the court, he can certainly shoot the ball. He really is a very, very good three-point shooter, Jake Russell. Okay. But Albert's got to be smart that he comes into a team situation. <laughs> Elaine gave him a 17-foot jump shot, he knocked that out. So Elaine gave him a 21-foot jump shot, he knocked that one out for three. Rolled out, went back in again. And Daniel, just when we're complaining that the score count is low, both teams come and drop what, four three pointers. Nick Nurse uh, relatively happy with life in, in, in that time out. If we take a look at the shooting statistics in the game, one stat kind of leaps out off the page at you here, Andre Lane. Six of seven, the Milkies lines from behind the old. They are really, well, Reggie Kirk, not they, Reggie Kirk is really feeling it from beyond that arc. Uh, he's been struggling, as you said earlier on, shooting way below his career average. And I'm sure his career average from the three-point line is around the, the high, the high 30s, I would say in between 38, 39, 40 percent. So far this season, he's only been shooting 28, 27, 20, 20, 28 percent from the uh, three-point line. So, uh, you know, really struggling. And I'm probably being generous. Yeah, you are being generous. It's 23 and a half percent as Will Johnson converts inside. Credit to, to uh, Jake Russell, who's come off the bench and banged out a couple of threes as well. Elaine going to work, going strong. Foul called on uh, Sterling Davis. And Elaine really playing that fat power forward spot, it looks like, in today's game. He's trying to take advantage of the slower players guarding him in Will Johnson. And he knows he's much quicker putting the ball on the floor, as you see here. Puts the ball on the floor, sorry, he's gone up against Sterling Davis and draws the foul. But Brighton so far have been doing a good, a good job of taking away that penetrating lane from Andrew Elaine. 
Yeah, Lane, uh, if you've never seen him before, much spends much of his time on what we like to call the blocks, down near the basket, round about the basket area, and go to work with his back to basket. But here today, he's been catching it 17, 18 feet. He's been hitting a few long-range shots yeah. as well and attacking the basket. And that gives him an extra dimension to his game. And also, what that does is free up the inside for Jason Seaman, especially when he's in the game. Yeah, not seeing... Uh, too much from Seaman offensively tonight, but Elaine's uh, offense will so certainly is, help it. So this is obviously Brighton's end of quarter play. They have they to like get to the run. shot off pretty quick though, because the shot clock is uh, running down. They miss. Milton Keynes with the boards. They got 10 seconds to get down and get a shot off. Lloyd, the veteran, knows how to run this play. Oh, he threw it away though. Davis from inside his own half. Oh, off the clock. And nearly went in, but I don't think it would have counted off the clock. But Milton Keynes haven't been great here, but if you're Nick Nurse, would you be disappointed that his Bears are only three up? Yeah, you've got to be. The way his team has played, they've played exceptionally well. But Milton Keynes are managing to stay within close range. And now what he was talking about in his previous contact, we have to get out and guard him. We've got to put a little bit more ball pressure, ball pressure on, the, on the basketball players of Milton Keynes. We'll be back with the second half after this break. Will Johnson timed the jump better. Lloyd came up with it. Good fast break. Seaman <laughs> with the throwdown. And that's a good way to start the half. Get some life into it for the Lions. Yep, the exclamation mark. Nice, easy score. And hopefully that just will give them a little bit more confidence for the team as well as individuals. Johnson stumbling, stumbling through the middle. I think he wanted a foul. Didn't get anything, just threw it up. Elaine to Lloyd. Payne. Good hands from Mike Brown to knock it loose. It will be a Lions ball. Nine on the shot clock. Although that play was broken up, I think that was the most confident offensive set I've seen for Milton Keynes all night. Mike Brown looks uh, in a little bit of pain there. Here we go. Lobbed into Seaman. Good catch by Seaman. Trying to get his own rebound. White just ripped it out of his hands. Lloyd, though, pulled it right back from Albert White. And the Lions will reset. Jason really should have did better, done better with that, that pass. It was great feed from Nigel Lloyd on a set out of bounds play. He should have put that ball in. Lloyd fires it up. Seaman with the offensive. Oh, misses the lay in. Six foot ten, but he still can't get it done. Oh, Milton Keynes really struggling. It's been handed to them on the plate, and they're not taking advantage of it. And once again, the crowd left standing until they yeah. make their first score. As they do in the first half, in the second half, the Bears fans on their feet until the first score. At the minute, they can't even get the ball. Lloyd for three, and Milton Keynes, who've not really kicked into top gear yet tonight, lead by a couple. And a shooting extremely well from the three-point line. White shot doesn't go. And when I say extremely well, I mean seven of yeah. eight. <laughs> extremely eight well six. is an understatement <laughs> still. That, they only missed one. Inside to Elaine, the dish, three yeah. second violation. One pass too many on that play. White has it. Davis and back again, White for three, tough shot doesn't go, Seaman fighting with Johnson for it, eventually it comes into the hands of uh, Alain. The start to the second half is pretty much similar to the start of the first half. Bears fans standing, waiting for the first score. Lloyd, Lloyd going to work, doesn't go, Randy Duck with the board, still the Bears looking for their first score of this second half. Will this be it from Mike Brown? No. Over two minutes into the half, and Brighton yet to trouble the score. Now, this is one of the things that Nick Mills was talking about. His team didn't take advantage of, 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 of situations like this. And Milton Keynes, once again, they're not taking advantage of Brighton missing and then coming down and scoring on the other end. Elaine misses out. Both teams gone back to struggling, Bill. <laughs> 
Oh, this is uh, in a row, blocked by Seaman. And finally, and listen to the roar of that. Nearly three minutes into the quarter, the fans get to sit down. There was one or two of them that had already gone a bit early. We are level at 46, three minutes into the third quarter. The Bears and the Lions locked in battle. Great hands there by Sterling Davis to come across there and steal that ball away from Jason Seaman. Johnson, oh, good spin from Will Johnson. Pretty move from Wilbur Johnson with the spin. 16 stones shows his light-footed. <laughs> Look at this move, catches the ball, spins off Nigel Lloyd and kisses it nicely off the glove. And it's a, that's a great athletic move for the big man. Victor Payne for the line. Seaman wants it on the blocks, but Johnson prevents that. So it goes up top to a lane. Seaman slashes into the middle of the catch. Good strong play by Seaman. Oh! Hit the deck, but still managed to make it go. Great play from Jason Seaman. Two class examples oh! of uh, big strong men going at it. The other end, a quick score. Sensational play. Will Johnson misses. This is the uh, the dunk, but Sterling Davis comes back with the rebound and puts it back. Duck. Lloyd bats it out to uh, Seaman. He's all on his own. He's going to go against Johnson. Tried the bounce pass, but it came off the legs. He threw it right at the feet. Fast break, end to end, frenetic charging foul. Wave off the score, says the official. And Lane was there for the stand. And that puts... Nick Nurse's second big gun, Sterling Davis on three fouls. So now they've got Albert White and Sterling Davis on three fouls. Victor Payne up top getting inside to Jason Seaman. Jason Seaman has had to work really hard on the blocks. Credit the Brighton defense because he really has been battling. But a three from Reggie Kirk, who is perfect in three attempts from behind the arc. And in total is seven of eight from all distances. Duck, strong to the glass, and Randy Duck has become more and more aggressive going to the basket as he's got confidence with his ankle, I think. And that's one of the reasons why they haven't taken Randy Duck out of the game as he goes in there strong, nice shot, bank shot off the backboard. But that's one of the reasons they haven't taken Randy Duck out. They don't want that ankle to get cold and seize up. They want to keep it loose, and as you said... And with more... every call, Nick Nurse is getting more and more irate on the Brighton sidelines. See the rebound here, Will Johnson. I mean, even though that one went his way, he was still <laughs> jumping up. I'm just looking at it, I was thinking, wait a minute, Brighton got the ball, where's he jumping up? Maybe he was saying, about time we got one. Crowd coming alive now. Great dish by Mike Brown, but... And that is Albert White, and that is oh, no. foul number four. Oh, no. And now the Bears are in huge problems. Sterling Davis and Albert White both on four fouls, and there are 14 minutes left in the game. There's White. Oh, you don't need to go chasing after that. The one thing is, Brighton are at home here, and there are, is a huge packed house here in the Brighton Centre. And when a team feels hard done by, so do the fans. And the fans will be more vocal to try and lift their team inside. And every score like that one by Will Johnson will be greeted by some big noise. And not only that, as you see Will Johnson going up with the reverse, somebody else has to step up now, as we were talking about, the, as Chris Finch was talking about at half-time. Somebody else has to step up now and contribute to the scoring. And whether that be Mike Brown, and it looks like probably it will be Will Johnson. But somebody definitely has to step up and contribute and put some points on the board. Davis was the game's leading scorer with 20, uh, and still is the game's leading scorer with 20, despite being on the bench with four fouls. That was Seaman backing up off that shot instead of following his rebound. Fortunately for him, Mike Brown was there to collect it. Duck had to rearrange off the good defense from Payne, managed to get it to Brown. It was not loose by Reggie Kirk, who thought it might have came off Mike Brown last, but the referee says, no, it is a Bears ball. I'm surprised that Nick Nurse, when he had his players in foul trouble, I'm surprised he didn't go to a zone to try and protect his players from fouls. Stolen away 
by, uh, it was Victor Payne on the far side. And here he is on the ball. Elaine. Backing down on uh, Will Johnson. Lobbed Great inside. Oh. Couldn't quite finish it though, Jason Seaman. How many of those have Jason missed this evening? Too many. And once again, we talk about are Milton Keynes going to take advantage of this wide open door that Brighton are giving them to blow this game open? No, they're not because Brighton are still in it and they're only four points behind. Well, Milton Keynes haven't shot the ball well here in this third quarter and yet this is probably the best quarter they've had. Yeah, but you've got to look on the other side. Brighton's just shooting a miserable 31%. I mean, that's a huge drop from, 50, drop from 57 in the, in the second quarter. I tell you, um, I might have worked it out there on that last timeout. How, you remember I mentioned Nigel Lloyd seems to be doing a lot more of the in-huddle timeouts. Maybe it's because they just felt there were too many voices in the timeout. The guys didn't know who it was. Yep. So what they have is little meeting beforehand to discuss what they're going to talk about in the timeout, and then they get all the relevant points out. But maybe that's it. And that helped because the last thing players want to hear is like, you know, three or four different voices telling them obviously will be different things. Mark Jackson called for the hold, and I noticed Martin Ford at the at the start of all of that was talking about well Reggie's got a mismatch here, and you know we feel Victor Payne can do a work on his man, and just spotting the things that maybe Nigel wouldn't see whilst he's on the court. Exactly, exactly. And now you look at the Brighton Bears team; they have so many mismatches over the floor because now it becomes a size issue for Brighton. You've got Randy Duck, six foot one. You've got Mark Jackson, who's below six foot, and you've got. Uh, Mike Brown is six foot one, going up against Victor Payne, Reggie Kirk, who's six foot five, six six. Yeah, they suddenly and look Nigel a small Moore unit, the... don't they, with uh, both Davis and uh, White on the team. Neither of whom are, are, are huge guys, but they just have good presence on the court. Duck lobbing inside to Johnson with the pull up short. And this makes Seaman it... goes up high. Seaman should rebound every shot now. Hit yes, on the lane should. now. And this makes it easy for Milton Keynes to defend because all they've got to worry about is Will Johnson and Randy Duck. Those are the only two guys really looking to score. Can't go to sleep on Mike Brown or Mark Jackson, though, but. Seaman is blocked! and the Bears will get it back. Will, great defensive play there. Mike Brown going hard to the basket. And right on cue, Mike Brown sticks one in for the layup. But this is what we're talking about. Somebody else has to come up with the scoring for the, Mil um, for the Brighton Bears when they're in the half-court set. He'll get up and do a reverse on that. He'll do a little showtime, but more importantly, Milton Keynes failing to take advantage. As you see Randy getting the easy layup here. Milton Keynes failing to take advantage of what Brighton are giving them, and it's back to a one-point basketball game. Yeah, Milton Keynes needs to take, uh, as the three goes, it doesn't even go in, but Milton Keynes needs to take advantage whilst the two main guys are on the bench. Brown for three! White tipped out by Lloyd, but only to Michael Brown. Back out to Jackson. Jackson. Mark Jackson gave up that yeah, shot. Yeah, that's his, that's his shot. Now they're going down to the pick and roll between Randy and Will. Shot clock running out on the Bears. Fired up Jackson. Tough shot doesn't go. Rebound Michael Brown. He lost it though. Lloyd comes up with it. Five seconds to go. Lloyd throws it the length. Stolen by Duck. Duck running it back. Pulls up oh. long three. Oh, not quite for Randy Duck. But the Bears have got through here. And they went through a tricky patch, but there's still only a point down here. This game is unbelievable the way it's been going. Both teams have been given. This just on the basis of White sat a bit longer. And uh, we'll wait and see. Milton Keynes once again throwing the basketball away. Andrew Elaine was wide open underneath the backboard and they throw the ball away and give the ball right back to Brighton. Jason Seaman on that last play, becoming the first line into uh, foul troubles with four. He is still out there. Not the nicest looking of shots coming from Will Johnson at the top of that key.
Nigel Lloyd here orchestrating yeah, I was the just offense. Yeah, to use the same word myself. <laughs> Taking his time, getting what he wants to get, and trying to get his team a high percentage shot. And they got one in they Jason, one. but he, met, but he, he missed. missed it. Dot kicks out to Brown. Jackson up top. Errol Seaman. Drew Spinks doing a really good defensive job, and Randy Duck keeping the ball out of his hands. Ball loose on the floor. Eventually, Nigel Lloyd picks it up. And Nigel Lloyd slows it down to the pace that he wants. Jackson with the steal, away come uh, the Bears. Jackson going strong, oh, good play from Mark Jackson, coast to coast, the steal for the lay -in. That looked like one of those old-time two-handed layups here. They see a two-hand because he's trying his best to avoid it being blocked. He makes the basket. As long as it goes in, doesn't matter how you do it. I tell you what, Nick Nurse has got to be really pleased with the way how his Brighton team are playing defense right now. They're undersized, but they keep coming up with steals. Duck with the pull up, doesn't go. Seaman with the rebound. That's one of them. If it goes in, boy, do you get some momentum. But if you miss it, you think, ah, was that the best option? Three on two. Brighton really doing a good defensive job with their main guns on the bench, but Errol Seaman yeah, will Seaman be caught for that. Away. As White and Davis check back into the game, now does this does this distract Milton Keynes and the fact that they see these two guys on the court on four fouls and think, let's go at them and get that fifth, get them straight back out of the game? Well, I think that would be the smart thing to do. You've got two guys you can take advantage of and try and get yourself a matchup where you're putting defensive pressure on them because obviously they'll want to stay in the game until the end of, until the final whistle. But sometimes you try a little bit too hard, if yeah, you know yeah. what I mean, to because, try and find. And yeah, everybody knows it's coming, so therefore the other Brighton players will go over there and try and help out. As we see here, the nice curl and cut from Drew Spinks, who picks up the foul from Mark Jackson. Spinks misses the foul. <laughs> really been struggling from the free throw line this evening. Yeah, he has. I mean, he's been, uh, what is he, two for eight now from the line. Jackson for three. Yes! Mark Jackson with a huge shot. And that gives the Bears a four-point advantage. And that's where Mark Jackson is at his best. When he comes down the floor, he's got his feet set. Catch and shoot. Catch and shoot. Inside to a lane, and Will Johnson goes up within that. Is foul number four on Will Johnson, and now the Bears are in real trouble. White, Davis, Johnson all on four fouls. And that's their whole back line, as you see Will Johnson deny Ooh. Andrew Elaine on that block. However, gave up What did the you foul. think on that one, Dre? Well, you know, my philosophy is on uh, big men going to work on the inside. I would, I would have said clean block. Um, it wasn't a harsh foul, it was a tic-tac foul. And uh, especially in a game of this magnitude, and it's been so tight throughout, the last thing you want to do is be you know, just give away tic-tac fouls. However, that's how the referees have been calling it, so I suppose at least they've been consistent. Elaine makes the first. However, Nick Nurse is voicing, voicing his opinion in another yeah. <laughs> on the sideline. Oh, oh own basket. Play. Own basket. That one will count for two and will be accredited to the captain, which I assume to be Nigel Lloyd. Don't see it too often where the defensive team bats it into their own ring, but it will be two points for the uh, captain of the line. Davis replies with the score at the other end. Yeah, you've got to respect Sterling Davis out there. Don't think he's an out-and-out -out four man that's just going to, you know, shoot close in jump shots. He can knock down the ball from even three-point range. Leon Knowles three doesn't go. Here's Albert White. We haven't seen enough of him tonight because of the foul oh. trouble. Oh. It's amazing how Albert is so unselfish. He sees the pass, he sees the pass, and Will should have had that in, in his hands, but he wasn't expecting the pass. No, to a lane. Loved into Seaman. Seaman spinning into double team problems, but converts. Good play from Seaman inside. Should have life a little bit easier with all these guys on foul trouble. Yeah, this is obviously something that, Milton, yeah, this is something that Milton keeps to take advantage of here, as we see on the action replay. 
They can go inside anytime they want now. All the back line of, Mil of, of Brighton Bears are on four fouls. Davis had his shot deflected by Kerr. No. And I think once again, Milton Keynes going to have to take advantage of the foul trouble that they that the Brighton Bears have. Elaine inside right. for two. And the Milton Keynes Lions go back in front in this game. 66 points to 65. We're at the midway point of the fourth quarter. And Nick Nurse has caught a timeout for the Brighton Bears. Here's a look at the, the shooting stats. And still Milton Keynes doing a stunning job from behind the, uh, the arc. But look at the balance in free throws. Five against 28 in terms of taken free throws. That's a lot. That's, that's a lot. But what's causing that, Milton Keynes are, are really consciously trying to pound that ball inside and take it to the backboard hard. And with all the fouls, you can see with all the foul counts uh, pounding up from Brighton, hence that's why they're making so many trips to the free throw line. But great recognition by Coach Nick Nurse trying to get his big time scorer, Albert White, into the game to give him a little bit of confidence. Oh, and a beautiful dish to Errol Seaman. Got to score that one, but he didn't. He drew the foul and will go to line for two. And I say it for about the 50th time this evening. How many times do you find unselfish players that get plays drawn for them that have only scored six points and that are used to scoring 20 by this stage still looking to pass the ball to the open man? Borders on being too unselfish, doesn't it? Yeah, it does. And um, and I know that one time... Um, I mean, I, I, it sounds stupid <laughs> yeah. to say he's too unselfish. But I know that on one occasion that Nick Nurse actually said that he took Albert White to one side and sat him down and said, listen, I know you can score. You can get me more points than you're doing. Just go out there and score. You're, you're being too selfish. I mean, you're too, being too unselfish. Go out there and, you know, be greedy once in a while. Well, level at 66. We had double overtime last week. Could we be on for it again, Andre? Oh, please. No. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think I can take the tension of two more overtimes. That really would be a first. Back-to-back -back double overtimes. Got to get the shot off. Got to shoot it. Did, did he get it off in time? The basket went in, but did he get the shot off in time? See, I thought that that was the same incident as what happened before. And now they're saying it got off in time, and before they said it we hadn't left his hand, so... I was pretty sure on the last time that they called it right and they didn't get it off on time. That one was very tight, and uh, uh, I might not have given it to him, I don't know. It was tight. Davis fires up for two. And Davis is feeling it. He's come back in the game after sitting on the bench for a best part of ten minutes and picked up pretty much where he left off. Elaine. Back to Elaine. Elaine with a 19-foot jumper doesn't go. Leon Noel can only knock it away from uh, Jackson, and it will be a Bears ball as Jason Seaman comes into the game. And also Nick Nurse making a move to get Errol Seaman out and Mike Brown in. So he knows that he's got his starting lineup as well. Actually, his starting lineup, Mark Minus. I'm trying to see who it's Mark Minus Will Johnson. Good hands to knock it uh, away by Victor Payne. They get it back to White, though. White spinning. Nice move. Too much on the shot, but partly because he was fouled in the process. And it looks like Albert's playing a little bit passive. Normally, he would have caught that ball and looked to attack the basket, but he doesn't want to give the referees any excuse to call an offensive foul. So he smartly takes it in, pulls up, draws the contact, and will go to the free throw line for two. His first trip of the line today. Only three of his colleagues have been there. And he gives the Bears back the lead. Right now, you're looking at the Milton Keynes Lions. They, too, are looking for a score 
and it's just and it's kind of surprising that they're not dumping it down inside but they do now oh and Seaman <laughs> falling off balance took their time about yeah. it but that was a good play though let the ball see both sides of the floor then go inside we are tied at 70 two and a half to go in the game I sense overtime, Daniel. I don't know about you, but I sense it. I can see it coming too. There is four seconds on the shot clock as Brighton look to inbound. To White gets it off quickly with the stroke. And hopefully that will get Albert's confidence going. He made the nice move, got himself to the free throw line. Now he makes the shot out on an out of bounds play. Leon Noel with a rushed, out of, out of off balance, three point shot with two minutes to go. The Bears fans getting to their feet, waving their banners, trying to cheer their team to victory in these final two minutes. It is a packed house here at the Brighton's there. And I was going to say, this trying to save it. I was going to say, this is a very important offense for Brighton Bears. They could have gone ahead by four, but instead they're giving Milton Keynes a chance to either tie I mean, or take or the lead. And they do. From Nigel Lloyd, a three reduces the chances of overtime by making it a one-point game. Nigel Lloyd, you don't hear from him for quite some time, and then he comes back and tries to put the dagger in. About two heavyweights going there, trying to deliver the knockout blow. Nice move from Brown to the finger roll, doesn't go, duck, comes up with it. Davis, big shot for three. Oh, just rimmed out. Michael Brown will chase it again, and the Bears will reset. Mike Brown has eight, uh, excuse me, nine boards this game. Just threw it right there into the hands of Jason Seaman. We're inside the final minute here. A one-point game. Brighton Bears really need a good, solid defensive stop here, and, and the score obviously down the other end. Wilkeen wisely taking Lloyd. some time. Lloyd off the glass, big shot doesn't go. Nigel tried to draw the foul but couldn't, but now it's off to the races for Brighton, but they've got to make sure that they get a good, smart play out of this offense. They need to score this trick. Albert White has the ball in his hands. Spinning, tough shot, oh! Unbelievable oh, show from Albert White, falling off balance and somehow got it to go. The Bears are back in front. Big time move by Albert the wonderful spin, hand time and concentration to finish that shot. Not loose, it will be a Milton Keynes ball. 11.8 seconds to go, a one point game. Milton Keynes have called a timeout to try and come up with a play that will win this ball game. Hey, 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 what I mean, Sean? Hey, what I mean, Sean? Just uh, side down out of bounds. I don't know, you've got to get something going. Side no, down out of bounds. Let's run the sideline play. Come off the double. Forward. As we come into the block, the regular sideline. Yeah. Three men at the top, we come off. As we come to block, we drop it down. Yeah, yo, yo. Come on, man. We're running the sideline out of play. Nine ten, blind at the top. No illegal kick. As we take it out. You come in short, right? Reggie's gonna come to the ball. Line out of bounds. Now regular shit. Okay. Regular yeah. shit. Like, huh? No, no, no. Out of bounds. Out of bounds. Out of bounds. Line. Line. Okay. Okay. Come off. They know it, but you need to come to the ball. Strong on the block. You need to take it over. As soon as you get it, bring it over here, Reggie. All right. Right. Because when I get the back, Mr. Andrews, he's coming right, right to the block. It's in the hands of uh, Victor Payne. Gets it to a lane. A lane is short. Rebound. The back. Defensive play was it Davis or I think it was Davis who got a little piece of that shot. A superb defensive play, which has probably, probably won the game for the Brighton Bears with four seconds to go. 
Super play defensively. Jason Seaman fouls out as he tries to go after that loose ball. And Daniel, I don't want to throw the omen on, but I mean, we thought so last week with the Sheffield Newcastle game that it's out of reach, but four seconds is a long time. And even if they make both of the free throws, Milton Keynes can still tie the game. It's, just, it's an inline ball, though, because they're not over the limit. Oh. Neither team's uh, over the limit. Well, Milton Keynes is going to have this one. And right now, Nigel is screaming at his players, saying, we've got to foul immediately. We must foul immediately. Watch Will Johnson go the length of the court and be wide open. They've missed him. If they can inbound the ball, they'll miss him. Oh, no, he's come back the other way. It's into Davis. Davis trying to run away from the foul, but the foul caught up with him, and it was in the shape of a lane. So now, what did we lose off the clock? A second and a half. There is 2.6 seconds left to yeah. make them have a live ball to try and throw it the length of the court. You're talking uh, Sterling Davis, just a clip under 80% from the free throw line and the reason why Will Johnson was wide open as you as you quite rightly yeah. saw he's the worst free throw shooter, shooter on, on the, the team yeah so they want the ball in his hands so <laughs> they can foul him Davis makes the first and that will probably be that I'd be tempted to miss this one so they have a bouncing ball and have to throw it rather than have an inline possession with no running clock and 2.6 but I'm not Sterling Davis yeah so there you 2. go 2.6 seconds will tick away pretty quickly yeah he does miss it. They're going to have to throw it the leg. That will win it if it goes. It doesn't. From Victor Payne, it was not too far away. But the Brighton Bears have pulled it out here. A 75-73 win. What a great game. Great game because you just didn't know where this, where, where this game was going to go. One team had the lead, then they gave it back to the other team, and it was just going backwards and forwards, and neither team taking control up until literally the last few seconds. Some spectacular performances. We saw flashes of Albert White when he wasn't in the foul trouble. Davis played well all the way through. Mike Brown with 10 boards, leading rebounder in the game, despite the fact he's only six left all. <laughs> and not, 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 not noticed for, uh, not for his shooting, but not his rebounding skills. And it, it's been really a good performance all the way around. And Simon has the MVP. Well, Stilling Davis, what a finish. Oh, it was good. You know, our team showed a lot of guts right there at the end. Uh, me and Albert got in a little foul trouble. And our bench just really stepped up tonight. You know, they were, the, they were an important factor for us tonight. And, you know, without them, you know, we wouldn't have got this victory. But, you know, we get, we get a thumbs up to the bench for tonight because uh, they came in and, 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 and held their own uh, during the crush times of the game. What about your own performance there? I mean, big defensive display at the end as well, you know, points. You put the free throw in to ice it. I mean, it must be a great night for you. It feels good. It always feels good to win, you know, and that's the most important thing, you know, because we got the victory tonight, and our team played together as a team, and we just came out victorious, and I'm, I'm just happy for that. I mean, it was a big, big, big win for you as well in the conference, wasn't it? Yeah, it was. It was, it was, a, it was, it was a booster for us. You know, we need this win. Uh, we've been having some tough times early in the season, but... You know, I think we're gonna play. If we can play like this every night and come out and just execute offensively and lock down defensively, I, I think everything will be all right for us. Nick Nurse, guts. <laughs> wow, I tell you, relief is another word we can use. Man, that was as hard a game as I've had to coach in a long time. And I, I don't know. I said all week I thought the teams were evenly matched, and I thought it'd come down to this. And thank God for the home court and the fans and the crowd and and making a couple clutch plays at the end. And and there's not much in it, is there? From your point of view, you may have won ugly, but it, but it was a big win, wasn't it? Well, you're always going to win ugly against Milton Keynes, man. That's just the way they play. Nigel's going to slow it down, and I thought I was happy at halftime at 44 points were scored. I thought, man, this is our tempo. And it, look, at he just he deflated the ball, and the game got weird like it always does. But a very big win for us. We're, all, we're not on bottom now, and we're like in third. That's how, that's how wild the Southern Conference is. Thanks very much, Nick. Well played tonight. Thank you. Well, that's all we've got time for today. I hope you've enjoyed the action. We've got a special treat for you coming up at Christmas on the 17th of December. More live basketball from the Brighton Centre as the Bears grapple with top of the table, Thames Valley Tigers. See you then.